Today in our 2012 GMC Savannah van, we'll be having a look at and installing the Concha Primus IQ Trailer Brake Controller, part number TK90160, in conjunction with the eTrailer ETBC7 installation kit, part number ETBC7. All right here's what our brake controller looks like installed. As you can see, it's a nice, simple design. Nothing overly complicated about the screen. It's a small, easy to use, easy to read display that gives us the basic information that we need to know in order to safely use our trailer brakes. When we're connected to our trailer, we'll have a C indicating that we have a good electrical connection. If we become disconnected, the screen will flash in C for no connection. And every time we start our vehicle up, it'll flash in C if we're not connected to a trailer when it initializes its setup. Off to the right here, we have our manual override switch. Whenever we move this switch over, it gradually applies more pressure to our trailer brakes. This is a good way to bring our trailer back in line behind us if we were to, slight, if we were to start to experience a jackknife situation. If you were to slow the trailer down without applying your vehicle brakes, it'll bring it back in line. Alternatively, when you step on your brake pedal, you can see that the trailer brakes will be applied. On the top here, above our screen, we have a button. This is our boost level button. Each time you press it, you will increase the boost level settings. There are three settings. Each one is just more pressure being applied in your brakes than the next. And additionally, you can turn your boost level off. Now, once this goes back to the normal screen, you'll notice that instead of having two dots like we did before, we only have one. If you have a dot next to the C on the right hand side of it, that tells you that you're in a boost mode. Finally, over here to the left, this adjuster wheel is our gain adjustment knob. If we apply our trailer brake override switch here and move this knob, we can adjust how much pressure is being applied to our brakes. It's a good idea to initially set your brakes to a setting around six. This way, it's right in the middle, and you can adjust it as necessary for your trailer load or for your comfort level. This brake controller is a great solution if you have electric trailer brakes on your trailer, but don't have a way to utilize them if your vehicle isn't equipped with a factory brake controller. This is a cost-effective and easy solution that will control trailer brakes from one to three axles in a proportional manner. It also can be mounted in a way from where it can be mounted zero degrees, which is level in the vertical plane, all the way up to 90. That's a nice feature about it. Some brake controllers can only be mounted in a level manner. This allows you to get your brake controller where you need it. Now that we've gone over some features of our Primus IQ, we'll show you how to get it installed. Okay, our vehicle currently has our four pole flat installed on it, which is great. That's why we're using the ETBC7 kit. It'll adapt for our four pole over to a seven way so we can use our brake controller. First thing we need to do is find a location to mount our seven way. Now, since our hitch doesn't have a bracket to mount our seven way to, we're gonna be using one that we have available on our website. This is a long bracket, no drilling required to install it. it installs using clamp. It's part number 18136. So we'll just stick it on top of our hitch right in this area here. This will give us plenty of clearance. So if we wanna use a locking device to secure our ball mount, we'll have plenty of room to get it in and out without interfering with our seven way. Wrap or clamp around the bracket and the hitch. We'll use a 5 16 nut driver to run down the clamp. Now our excess clamp that we have, we'll just snip it off with a pair of 10 snips. Okay, now we'll install our bracket for the seven way onto our no drill bracket that we just installed using the provided hardware. Okay, now we'll just snug down our hardware. Okay, now we'll take our seven pole, slide our wires through the hole, stick them over our hitch, and we'll secure it to the bracket with the provided hardware. Now we'll just snug down this hardware as well. Okay, now we're underneath. We'll plug our four pole adapter from our seven way into our existing four pole. And then 
we'll run a zip tie through our wires here to help secure our connector so you don't have to worry about it ever becoming unplugged. All right, now we're gonna take some electrical tape, tape up the wires here a little bit, and go on to the connector here. This will help provide us a little bit more protection from the elements. Okay, now we're gonna take our ring terminal here off our white wire. This is our ground wire. And we'll attach it to our frame with the provided self-tapping screw. All right, this purple wire here is for reverse light input signal. We're not gonna be using it today. So what we're gonna do is wrap it up with some electrical tape to keep debris out of the butt connector in case our customer was ever in need of using it. Now, we're gonna take this and bundle it up a little bit and secure it with the zip tie. And now we'll tuck this wire up inside the frame pocket here, along with the remainder of our ground wire and we'll secure it with another zip tie up to our four pole wiring right here. Okay, that leaves us with these two wires here. The black one is our constant 12 volt power, which will connect to the battery. Our blue one is our input wire from our trailer brake controller to power the electric brakes on our trailer. We'll connect both those wires to our gray duplex wire, which has two wires inside of it, and we'll run this to the front of the vehicle. We'll take the insulation off by splitting it right down the middle with a utility knife, pull it apart, and we'll find our two wires. We'll just cut off the rest of the insulation here. Now we'll strip back both these wires. Okay, the black wire, we'll put to the black wire Black wire is again our 12 volt power. Just crimp it down. Our white wire, our brakes again. Put that to the blue. Now any connection that we make, we're gonna wrap an electrical tape from this point on forward. Just to help protect it from the elements, prevent corrosion and potential shorts in the future. Okay, we went ahead and put some wire loom that inc included with our ETBC7 kit over our wires to go over the hitch to help conceal them a little bit better and also help protect them. And we just tidy things up and tucked it all up in next to our frame as best as possible. Our duplex wire, we routed through the frame a little bit to help protect it from around our spare tire, went up and over our frame, and then we secured it on the other side, all the way front, to the wiring harness. So it follows the parking brake cables here and this wiring harness. We just have it zip tied every few inches, working our way front on top of the frame. Went behind this body mount here. Continue following our wiring harness. The wiring harness then comes back on the inside of the frame. We kept it as far away from the exhaust as possible Put it on the inside edge of this wiring harness, which has some protective heat shielding on it. And we continue following that up into our engine bay. Okay, our duplex wire is zip tied again to that wiring harness. Then we brought it up behind our steering column. Our steering column's in the sleeve right here. So we don't have to worry about the steering column itself moving. And then it's secured to this wiring harness right here next to our power steering reservoir and our master cylinder. Like we, just like we did on the back, we're gonna separate our two wires from inside our sheathing. So we'll just go down off our utility knife all the way down to the very end of our duplex. Now we'll just cut off the sheathing all the way. Okay, now we need to mount our two circuit breakers to our firewall. I'm just gonna go right here in this area next to our power steering reservoir. We're gonna be using a 40 amp breaker and a 30 amp breaker. I'll also use the provided self-tapping screws to secure it in place. Okay, with that one started, we'll get the other one started. All right, I'm just gonna unbolt our air box here. And lift it up, slide it over to the side. 
Now I have room to work. So we have a straight shot and it goes in properly. I'll secure the other one. Okay, now we'll mount our 30 amp breaker right next to our 40. Okay, that's a nice secure mount for our breakers. Okay, now we'll just put our air box back in its original position and re-secure our screws. Okay, now our black wire right here. We're gonna measure off how much we need to the silver terminal on our 40 amp breaker. The silver terminal is the auxiliary side. This is again our constant 12 volt power to our seven way on the back of the vehicle. We'll strip off some insulation here. Take a small ring terminal, stick it on, and crimp it into place. I'm gonna route it behind this bracket for our power steering reservoir. Take our nut off, place the ring terminal over, re-secure the nut. We'll tighten down all these nuts at the end of our installation. Okay, now the grommet where our main wiring harness pass through our firewall, we're gonna be inserting our white wire through an existing hole in the grommet and pulling it inside our vehicle. Yeah. All right, you can see where our white wire comes through our grommet and the firewall now. We'll just pull it the rest of the way into our vehicle. Now we'll measure off how much white wire we need. Cut off the excess. Making sure we save it because we'll be needing it again later. Okay, now our white wire that we trimmed off the excess of. We'll strip off some insulation. Take one of our buck connectors that's included. Crimp it down. And we'll attach it to the blue wire on our brake controller harness. This is our brake output wire. Okay, with that done, we'll place a buck connector onto our black wire. This is how our brake controller will get power. Now we'll take a leftover segment of the black wire that we had from our duplex wire strip off some insulation and attach it to our black wire. And we'll run this wire through the firewall through the same hole as our white wire. Now before we pull our black wire all the way through the firewall, we're going to make a connection with the red wire. This goes to the cold side of our stoplight switch in a typical installation. But on this vehicle, there isn't one, so we're gonna be making this connection to a fuse underneath the hood. So we have a segment of brown wire that we had laying around, just 16 gauge wire. You can buy some on our website as part number 16-1-1. So by the foot, you'll probably need about six feet in order to do this, so just order a quantity of six if you need to purchase any wire. Okay, with that secure, we'll just tape the other end of our wire with some electrical tape to our black wire right here. We we'll wanna wrap this fairly tight because we're pulling it through the firewall. All right, now I'll go pull the black wire through the firewall. All right, these are white wire. That is our ground wire for our brake controller. Ideally, you would like to hook this directly up to our battery, but in our particular application, we won't be able to do that due to other aftermarket accessories on this vehicle. So we're gonna hook this up to a chassis ground instead. Let's put our butt connector on there. Take a segment of our white wire that we have left over and we'll combine the two. Now we'll measure off how much we're gonna need in order to make contact with the chassis Cut off the excess, strip off the insulation, and we'll attach a ring terminal. Okay. okay, now our accelerator pedal here is bolted directly to our firewall. This nut up here on the top right, it's 10 millimeter. We'll remove that. Place our ring terminal over that stud and re-secure the nut. This will give us an ideal ground for our brake controller. Okay, now our black wire 
which is the power wire for a brake controller. We'll hook it up to the auxiliary port, the silver one again, on our 30 amp circuit breaker. Okay, now our leftover segment of black wire, or make a lead for each one of our breakers to hook up down to our fuse box here where it gets power directly from our battery off this big cable. All right, now we'll measure off how much wire we're going to need to make our connection. Cut off the excess. Strip back some insulation. We'll attach a large ring terminal. Just leave that loose for now. Strip back our insulation. And attach our final large ring terminal. So we're going to be attaching both of ours underneath this 10 millimeter nut right here. This cable goes directly to our battery. Just tighten that nut back down. Give it a few turns by hand. And we'll tighten it the rest of the way. Okay, now we'll tighten up all of our nuts with our 3 8 socket. Now our vehicle has a fuse right here. This fuse is only getting power when the brake lights are applied. So this is perfect for our brown wire to attach to. Now in order to get into there, we'll remove the fuse first. And we'll be using a product that we have on our website called an add a circuit. This will go into where the fuse was originally. We'll be able to reinstall the fuse that we pulled right here so the circuit that was controlled is still protected. Then we have a spot for a second fuse which goes to this wire lead here where we'll attach our brown wire. So we'll first place back in the 15 amp fuse that we removed. We'll use one of the provided 10 amp fuses that comes over at a circuit, put in the other fuse spot. Make sure our fuses are inserted all of the way. We'll cut off our excess brown wire, insert it into the butt connector of the center fuse tap, and crimp it on down. Now we'll reinstall the fuse. Now our fuse box lid is two pieces. We'll go ahead and separate them. And our smaller piece here, you may need to make a notch in it for your wires to pass through. You can use a utility knife, side cutters, or a rotary tool. So we'll set that aside and replace the big section of our fuse box lid. Push it down into place, make sure it's secure, and we'll reinstall our smaller section, just like that. Okay, now we need to find a suitable place for our brake controller. I'm just going to mark the top corners here where I want my bracket to go. That way when I screw it in the dash, I'll be able to have it nice and straight. Okay, so we just lined up our brake controller with the dots that we made and secure it with the provided self-tapping screws. Now before we install it in our bracket, we'll plug it in, just make it easier on us. Slide it back into our bracket. Line up the holes where we want it and secure it with the self-tapping screws that come in the kit. All right, to wrap up our installation, we went ahead and secured up all of our loose wires underneath the dash to keep away from any of our pedals or any of our other moving parts like the steering column. We just went to existing wire harnesses or existing points of contact that'll be secure and out of the way. And that completes our look at and installation of the Takancha Primus IQ Trailer Brake Controller, part number TK90160, in conjunction with the eTrailer ETBC7 installation kit, part number ETBC7, on our 2012 GMC Savannah van. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.